Hot stuff in the patch, mechanics are updated. Mm, let's try it again. Hot stuff in the patch, mechanics are updated, brood carriers, containers, here is the devs that made it. You'll ask me where to check, no time to hesitate. Participate in public test and give us all your hate. Hi, Ilya. Hi. What are public tests for? Why do we carry out two of them? And what part do you play in them? We need the public test as a final check for an update before releasing it to our players, to ensure that everything is great when an update is released. What do you test exactly? We test all new mechanics and activities that are set to be released in an upcoming update. How can I join the public test? It's very simple. Go to the news page. Information regarding a test is usually published before its start. The public test is an individual game client, which is why you need to download it. Install the game center, download the client, create an account, and you're ready to go. Okay, so I go in, play the game, and you receive my feedback. But what do I get in return? For each test, we prepare different tasks for players. And upon completion of these tasks, players receive rewards such as signals, camouflage, and Warship's premium account time. How many people typically participate in the public tests? Around 15 to 20,000 people participate in the public tests. During each test, we check the game's behavior while many people are playing it. Do you change much about the updates as a result? Yes, we change a lot. Sometimes we might even remove something. Let's assume that we tested a new mechanic of inflicting minimum damage. After reviewing the feedback, if it became clear that we couldn't release that feature, it would be sent to be reworked and wouldn't appear in the update. Does the behavior of players differ on main servers in comparison to the public test? Yeah, of course. Since it's not your main account, you play in a more relaxed and adventurous way. Does this mean that I can install the public test, receive bonuses, and even go a little rogue? Just a little. I suppose you'll be able to try out some new tactics for yourself. Attacking with Alki is a part of history. Controlling your squadron is no longer a mystery. Yeah, of the carrier is finally here. We are switching things up, even the tears. Sasha, it's your time to tell us about the aircraft carriers, both the British variety and aircraft carriers in general. Why has this ship type been reworked? The simplest answer is that we looked at the statistics regarding how many people play the game using aircraft carriers. These were published recently, by the way. When we looked at the numbers, there were only 4-5% to of players using them. How did this task start, and how did it progress stage by stage? Stage 1, the task came in with the objective of reworking the aircraft carriers. Stage 2, we needed to identify and allocate all of the main problems. Stage 3, we had to assemble the first prototype. Actually, the last stage was slightly easier. Our studio already had a prototype utilizing the third-person control system. After the prototype was ready, we began devising the primary concept, or to be more precise, a few concepts. Following discussion about the various concepts, we chose one for further prototyping. Could you please tell us in detail how the gameplay has changed? The gameplay changed to a third-person control system. With the camera now just behind the airplane, you have a few runs on target, and every run is pure action. I know that you added new armament, and that the British armament is now even more special. Armament. Now we have three types of offensive aircraft. The first type are attack aircraft. They carry unguided missiles. British attack aircraft, by the way, carry more of these missiles than the aircraft of other nations. The next type are dive bombers, with the British having carpet bombers instead. The British bombers don't dive, which is why they can carry more bombs on board. However, targeted ships have more time to react due to the bombs being dropped from high altitudes. What about the third type? The third type are torpedo bombers. We've already seen them in the game. They basically remain the same. But the British have special torpedo bombers, don't they? Yes, the British, like any other nation, have their own special torpedo bombers. They have a large HP pool and short-range but very accurate torpedoes. In other words, you play against ships with strong anti-torpedo protection. You mean don't release torpedoes to the side, but to the bow? Something of the kind. Speaking of the new 
aircraft carriers. Most of all, I like that control is within the keyboard and mouse when approaching a target. How was that decision made? From the start, we all knew that there was a problem with a conventional control scheme. When we started the discussion, we considered the idea of control using a mouse, but very specific mouse control, so that you have control only over a small sector with it. I mean, mouse control is active only within a small sector. To be honest, it sounded very unintuitive and unclear at first, but then we looked more deeply at the idea and realized that it would take only one or two days to implement. So we decided to try it. When you get used to it, it's actually really convenient, but at the beginning, it's just... So you always have a chance to slightly adjust your airplane if your run is inaccurate from the start. This allows for a few mistakes. That's cool. Three D department bringing history to life, raising chips from the death with mouse clicking mind. Noble photos, blueprint, guide ain't no bears. Who is this Pablo G? Tell us all about carriers. So we're releasing a new branch of British aircraft carriers. Tell us how this branch came to be, as it is now, and what did you do to achieve that? Basically, the preparations for creating this branch started quite a long time ago. In 2015, our employees visited Great Britain for the purpose of finding references, documents, and other materials for creating the various ships of the British branches. At the same time, we worked with the British Archive in order to find the necessary historical blueprints and create ships in accordance with the exact historical design documents. I know that you weren't able to find blueprints for all ships, so what happens when you lack a blueprint for a particular ship? In such cases, when you can't obtain an actual blueprint, a ship is usually designed according to the known data, such as displacement, speed, and armament. Using this data, our specialists design a ship and make the drawings that are used for creating a model. We have had cases where we obtained the actual blueprints of the ship that we had just designed, but prior to that, there were no clues regarding where to even find the blueprints. As far as I know, a similar situation happened with our Tier X ship. Which parts matched the blueprints, which didn't, and which had to be remade? The drawing made by our specialist turned out to be highly accurate. Naturally, some minor elements such as location of staircases, doors, and other functional elements differed from the blueprints. So we had to fix those elements of our drawing. Can you give me an example of a specific feature that the British have? First of all, the British are basically inventors of the aircraft carrier ship type. They were the first to build such ships. Initially, these ships were based on the hulls of other ship types. I mean, not aircraft carrier hulls. A cruiser, transport ship, or battleship was built first, and then it was rebuilt as an aircraft carrier. Which aircraft carrier do you consider to be the most interesting? One of the most interesting and difficult in production was the model of aircraft carrier Furious. She has very complex geometry. If you look at her in the game client, you'll see, for example, that her flight deck was made from a takeoff ramp. That's historically accurate. It's almost the same case that we have now with Kuznetsov and the British aircraft carriers. Naturally, the takeoff ramp was significantly smaller and not so noticeable. Our modelers had to spend a great deal of time to create a model of the historically accurate ship. You have one question about a tree release. Tell me how to get them in an early access, please. Roman Yefremov lives by the clock. Containers resources, he keeps them all in stock. Everyone's asking the same thing. How can I get early access to the British carriers? It's simple, really. Unusual, but very simple. There are two new resource types. You receive one of them for playing, while the other is dropped from containers. You can also get containers simply for playing the game. Why two types of resources? The case with the early access to British destroyers showed us that players didn't like it when ships were dropped directly from containers. That's why one resource type drops from containers. And to earn the second one, you'll need to play a little. Sounds great. So how do I get my aircraft carriers when I have these two resources? You enter the arsenal, click on aircraft carriers, and you'll find tier four, six, and eight carriers. It's there that you can obtain them and be happy as a result. You mentioned containers. Will there be anything else inside them apart from new resources? Apart from new resources and the usual rewards, they will hold elements of a collection dedicated to British aircraft carriers. They can also give you combat missions, which, once completed, will reward you with one of the four ships which have proven themselves capable of fighting against the aircraft carriers in question. Cool! Thank you very much, Roma. It's easy. There's a few old mechanics that need to be changed. Radar and floating, that's what we have rearranged. If a Wooster is torpedoed, what shall we do? Igor Lazarev is here with another breakthrough. 
Could you tell us more about the changes made to flooding? We wanted to make management of damage control party closer to fires. That is, there will be two instances of flooding now, one fore and one aft. The ship is divided in half, and if just one area is flooding, it causes significantly less damage than if both are. Like one instance of fire, approximately. Can flooding be prolonged? No. We've removed this feature, and now, as with fires, if you have flooding in the bow and you get hit by another torpedo there, it won't cause more flooding. And what about changes to ship specifications? What penalties does flooding apply to engine power, for example? It's become stricter now. All ships are afflicted with minus 30% forward and minus 60% reverse speed. It doesn't have a significant impact on battleships. In general, they receive more damage from flooding, but it's quite important for cruisers and destroyers. If you're in a safe situation on your cruiser at the moment, just wait until the flooding is over. If you need to quickly retreat, then yes, you'll have to repair it and get rid of this debuff. As far as I know, it's not the only mechanic that you tuned. What's happening to surveillance radar? Surveillance radar was quite an ultimate consumable. Pressing the button resulted in the destroyer nearest you basically ceasing to exist. That's the moment that we were unhappy about most of all, when a spotted destroyer falls under intensive, focused fire. We tuned the mechanics in such a way that the ship now has six seconds to either leave the area or find some cover. As a result, nothing will change for the player enabling surveillance radar and for those detected by it. But allies will only see the spotted target if it remains in the radar's effective area for six seconds uninterruptedly. So if a destroyer leaves this area and returns, the countdown begins anew? Yes, it will restart. However, the destroyer will appear on the mini-map without being displayed in the game world. Can't keep calm any longer, something green in your gears Just one click of the button, no more waiting for years Heads up, supply is coming in hot Alisha got some used to make your jaw drop Hi Alisha, hello I have the $64,000 question for you What is this new feature that we've developed? We've added a single button called Open All Containers Finally! Yeah, in addition to that, after you click the button A special window will appear where you can see all loot and items that you receive from the containers. Why did it take so long to make a single button? This button hides a great technical service solution. Roughly speaking, we couldn't design the button based on the previous technical solution, because it would transform into the server down button. The moment you open a container, a great number of operations runs on the server. A box is being discarded, items from the box are being processed and added to your account, etc. If you multiply all those operations, the server wouldn't be able to process all of the occurring operations and would stop responding. You mentioned that some parts of the interface were also changed, right? We also reworked system messages. Now there will be no multitude of system messages for each item received. There will only be a message telling you how many boxes you opened. As such, we added a window which shows the progress of opening boxes and also the contents that you receive from them. Anchors away, we pushes the piston. We've told you everything, sharing knowledge and wisdom. Commanders, thanks. Wait for updates with attention. Hope to get you likes and words in the comment section.